On today's show, we know that the Capitals need to make some big changes this summer. One of the biggest things, I think, is Brian McClellan making good on that top six forward. But it's not just forwards. The Capitals need some help on defense. What players will be available on July 1st? I'll discuss next on this edition of Locked on Capitals. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and a welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the SiriusXM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holmey. I've covered the Capitals for the last three seasons for Locked On and various other platforms before that. I'm also the host of the weekly show called The Capitals Mission. Cast available wherever you find your podcasts. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet, that's 150 bucks. With any winning $5 bet, visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about the big names that will be available on July 1st. And is there any chance that the Capitals might be able to go out and acquire any of these players. I'll talk about that a little bit later. We'll talk about Sam Reinhardt. Yes, that's Sam Reinhardt of the Florida Panthers and how he is a 50-plus goal scorer. How much of a game changer could that be for the Capitals? A little bit later, we'll talk about it's not just forwards. The Capitals need help on the blue line. And is Brandon Montour a guy that could help on the blue line? And then in the last segment, we'll talk about Elias Lindholm, a center that could potentially take the Capitals to the next level. But just to get it going here, talking about Sam Reinhart. Wow. If you want to talk about going out and trying to get I'm going to go ahead and say the biggest fish probably on July 1st. That is it. And it's summer, it's May, and I'm not afraid of dreaming. I would love nothing more right now uh, than to be able to come to you guys in the near distant future, probably around July 1st or so, and say the Capitals did something crazy. They acquired Sam Reinhardt. How much of an absolute game changer could that be? For the Capitals, any team, but for the Capitals, they would be next level, right out of the gate. We've seen, and if you watch any of the postseason hockey, you see how clutch he is for the Panthers. Uh, As of July 1st, Sam Reinhart will be 28 years old and holds the position, we know of right wing, uh, with a salary cap hit of 6.5 mil. Reinhart has enjoyed a remarkable season achieving an impressive 57 goals and 37 assists, resulting in a total of 94 points. Again, let's underline that a little bit. How much better would the Capitals be with a 57-goal score? Amazing. I could only, it's a dream. It's a fever dream at this point. This exceptional performance has captured the attention of Florida Panthers who are eager to secure him to a long commitment to the team. Again, I understand it's not going to be easy, but Brian McClellan is going to have to get his creative pencil out and figure out a way to try and get this done. Panthers GM Bill Zito commended Reinhardt's achievements, expressing pride and happiness for his outstanding year. Zito acknowledged Reinhardt's exceptional achievement of 50 goals 
in a season, a milestone accomplished by only around 100 players in NHL history. He also emphasized Reinhardt's focus on winning and highlighting his contract negotiations may take time. The Panthers are committed to finding the right contract for both Reinhardt and the team. There's one thing I know for sure, for sure, is regardless of what team he goes to, he is going to be getting a substantial raise. And I know the first thing Capitals fans are going to say that there's not enough cap room to accommodate a player like this. Oh, yes, I under do. I do understand. I do understand that a lot of players would have to get moved out to facilitate something like that. I understand that. But how how eager are you as Capitals fans to make this team better in the fall? I understand everything that I've seen. I've read from insiders that the Capitals are going to have to be patient. We're going to have to wait for McMichael and Lop here to grow in into really great NHL players. But until then, we'll have to be patient. Nonsense, I say. I say, Mac, go out there. Swing for the fences. We saw what you did. Uh, acquiring Darcy Kemper, which, you know, now doesn't seem like a big deal, but at the time, him coming off, off a Stanley Cup win was a big deal. Let's try and pursue a player like Sam Reinhardt or not like Sam Reinhardt. How about going after Sam Reinhardt himself? Despite Reinhardt being one of 13 pink free agents on the Panthers, uh, he has expressed a strong desire to continue his tenure with the team. Of course, we always hear that. Uh, he's playing on a team that's in Stanley Cup contention. I would be most surprised, unless you're a player like Evander Kane, that you're going to come out and say, yeah, my team sucks and I want out. That's just not the way things go. Negotiations for his contract extension are currently ongoing, with both parties demonstrating a commitment to reaching an agreement. Reinhardt's primary focus remains on the ongoing playoffs, and he aspires to secure a long-term contract with the team. I'm going to go ahead and say it. There is only two players that I can think of on the team that I wouldn't want to move uh, to bring in a player like that. And I'm going to go ahead and say that's Alex Ovechkin and Tom Wilson and maybe John Carlson. Anything else other than that, move it out. To, to get a player uh, like Reinhardt in here, I, I don't know if Capitals fans realize it. It would be an absolute game changer. The Panthers possess the flexibility to retain key players, provided that core members are willing to accept slightly reduced salaries aligning with an internal cap structure. This would involve Reinhardt accepting a, a contract less lucrative than those of higher earning players such as Alexander Barkov and Matthew Kachuk, despite the potential for a bidding war. If Reinhardt were to enter the open market, he has unequivocally expressed his, his desire to remain with the Panthers. Again, of course he's going to say that, but I, again, I just can't get over... Uh, you know, the thought of a 50 plus goal scorer playing on the Capitals. Uh, I, the possibility is just, it boggles my mind. In conclusion, despite the complexities of contract negotiations and impending free agencies, Reinhardt and the Panthers are both committed to securing a mutually beneficial agreement. Their shared focus remains on ongoing playoffs, reaffirming their dedication to achieving success, both on and off the ice. So what is, you know, some of the things that I know from following hockey for a long time is that once you add Stanley Cup winner to your resume, your value gets exponentially larger. So if he can tack on that he won the Stanley Cup in 2024, uh, I think that all of a sudden his asking price is going to go way up. And I know that he is saying right now, while he's under contract with the Panthers, that he wants to stay here. He's a businessman at the end of the day. And there is the possibility that he could be on the move. Why not consider a move to Washington to play with the likes of Alex Ovechkin and Tom Wilson and John Carlson, those kind of players. I think that, you know, the, the, the Capitals are still a great destination to go to. And I think that oftentimes as Capitals fans, we don't think we can have nice things, but it is definitely possible. Uh, that it could happen again. If these things are not easy, is GM Brian McClellan the guy to get a deal like this done? That I'm not sure. I was talking to someone on YouTube about this that I don't know necessarily if GM Brian McClellan is the guy to take this team to the next phase. I know that he took a promotion last summer and I don't see him going anywhere, but I wouldn't be opposed to that. I just, you know, I think in order to facilitate something like this, you have to have 
you have to have a, a, a good ability to be able to position things and finagle things that I don't necessarily know if Mac has in his tool set. I'd like to think he does. And something like this could really redeem himself in the face of a lot of Capitals fans to go out and get a player like Sam Reinhardt or Brandon Montour or any other player that I'm going to talk about in, in the upcoming weeks here that could change. And I know that the script for the Capitals is, you know, no major rebuild till Ovechkin is here. I want to fast track this team and this team would be markedly better with a player like Sam Reinhardt. Capitals fans, let's not be afraid to dream. Uh, I know I'm going to hear comments. I can already see them being typed on YouTube and, and Twitter right now. Dan, there's no chance it's going to happen. It can happen. And I'm not afraid to believe. All right. So coming up here straight ahead, it is not just the forwards that need help. We need help on the blue line. It cannot be John Carlson logging in 30 minutes a night per game. It's just not sustainable. We need help. What's one player that could help bolster the Capitals in that regard? I'll discuss straight ahead. It's winner take all in the NBA and NHL and fan duels giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. And let me tell you something, guys. If you're watching the NBA playoffs or say you're watching, watching a Nationals game and you're not that into it, Open up the FanDuel app, put a little bit of money on the game. All of a sudden, the game is that much more exciting. So go to FanDuel.com slash lock on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team. Every day, so it is not just the the blue line. It's not just the forwards. This team needs a lot of help in a lot of different regards. Uh, in the first segment, I spoke about that they need help in goal scoring. In this segment, I'm going to talk about the blue line, as I think a lot of different positions need to be addressed. This summer, the blue line is one of those, and I think that there is options internally but ultimately, I think the Capitals will have to go outside of the organization to obtain a player that's going to be next level for this team. And one of those players is Brandon Montour, another player that should be familiar if you are watching the playoffs. He would be a notable upgrade on the blue line. I really do believe it. Uh, Brandon Montour has had a career path similar to his teammate Reinhardt having played for multiple teams before finding success with uh, reigning Eastern Ch uh, Conference champions. Like Reinhardt, Montour entered the current season without protection or a secure contract. However, there are indications that both parties are open to continuing their working relationship. And I know that the Florida Panthers, especially if they find a way to make it to the next round or win a Stanley Cup, they are going to try to retain as many players as they possibly can, of course. But like I talked about with Reinhardt, it's not going to be easy as their agent knows that, wow, my player's value has gone up quite a bit. Montour's performance in the 22-23 season was exceptional with an unexpected 16 goals and 73 points, marking a significant career achievement. Uh, despite this, the remarkable performance, general manager Zito chose to exercise caution in evaluating Montour's performance and did not rush to secure his contract until July 1st. When his value will hit its peak, instead, the Florida front office opted for patience observing Montour's recovery from off-season sur uh, surgery. So I think that ultimately, what is this about? This is about Zito taking the posture of, is this Montour being good in a vacuum? Let's see what he does through the duration of the playoffs. How is he going to, is that injury going to be exacerbated? Is that going to be something that's going to, to rear its ugly head? I think it's a wait and see approach. I understand that. And I understand that would be a risk for a team like the Capitals to obtain someone like that. But for a player like Brandon Montour, I'm going to go ahead and say it's worth the risk. Although Montour's performance in the current season 
did not reach the same heights as the previous one. He has remained a consistent contributor, telling eight goals and 25 assists in 66 games. His resilience and solid performance in the 23 pole season further underscore his value to the team. Again, you know, it's up and down. You cannot achieve highs every year. We're talking about what he did in 22-23 with 16 goals and 73 points. And, you know, he is a blue liner. And, you know, you take a look at it. Sometimes those guys don't necessarily chip in and get as many goals as a forward. We get that, even though you take a look at the Capitals blue line, oftentimes they do get involved in goal scoring, that if we could have a really sound defenseman, uh, I think that would be worth it. Furthermore, the scarcity of puck moving right shot defensemen in their prime enhances Montour's market value and is expected that he will seek a higher figure in contract negotiations. While GM Zito prioritized securing another pending UFA defenseman, Forsling, signing him to an eight-year extension with a $5.75 million cap hit, the negotiations with Montour are anticipated to reflect his significant contributions to this team. So you take about, you know, people automatically are going to ask, Dan, who's going to come out to, uh, you know, accommodate something like that? As we know, John Carlson is a big piece. And you take a look at Martin Faravari is a piece of the future. Alex Alexiev, I would also say, is a part of the future. I could see the Capitals moving on from TVR and or Jensen. We've seen the bumpy ride for both of those players. And am I going to say that Brandon Montour is going to be an upgrade over those two players? Absolutely. So, you know, oftentimes people will say, you know, well, that player's not going to come here for this or that reason. You're going to have to move players out to accommodate that. So if the Capitals had to move out TVR or Jensen to acquire and have a guy on the roster like Brandon Montour, guess what? I would go ahead and sign off on that. Regarding Montour's figure and future with the team, General Manager Zito express, expressed his desire to maintain the team's core while respecting the individual decisions of the players on March 8th. Again, we're talking about then. This approach demonstrates the team's commitment to fostering a positive working relationship with its players while ensuring the long-term success of the organization. It will be a tall order for Zito to try to get all of those players to come back. Even if they don't win a Stanley Cup, it's going to be most difficult to do that. And talking about how Zito prioritized Forsling over him, there's the possibility that a guy like Montour could be on the move. Uh, and it's an intriguing thought. And I think that, you know, the Capitals would be better with a player like Montour on this team. Is that something that is actuality? I don't know, but that is what I'm going to be doing and talking about through these summer months uh, up until July 1st, I guess, is the possibilities of how this team can get better. Again, we like to talk about relying on this team getting better internally. And looking at on the blue line, there are other internal options. Alex Alexiev, I think, with Joel Edmondson, has moved out and solidified his spot on this team. You take a look at players like Vinny Iario and Lucas Johansson, those kind of players um, that potentially, ostensibly, are going to make this team better. Is Vinny Iario ever going to be as good as Brandon Montour? Is Lucas Johansson with his multiple different opportunities on the big team, is he ever going to find sure footing with the Capitals? Uh, you know, those are all the things that we need to question. And uh, and how are those things going to be rectified? We saw when the Capitals signed Gustafson a couple of years ago, what that meant for the Capitals and uh, how they've had other options uh, I do think that, you know, right now the onus and a lot of the pressure goes on John Carlson and Martin Faravari, and that's not really fair to either one of those players. I think that they need more capable blue liners that can step up and, and play a big role, and I think the Capitals would be exponentially better with a player like Brandon Montour on the roster. All right, so coming up here straight ahead, we do know that the Capitals struggled with consistency, with the centers, with Backstrom stepping away from hockey and Evgeny Kuznetsov getting dealt out to the Hurricanes, they need consistency and they need that top tier upper echelon center. Is Elias Lindholm that center for the Capitals? I'll discuss straight ahead.
All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the blue line. And one of the things I'm going to talk about is in the previous segment, the blue line needed help with Brandon Montour. Now the other big thing that needs to change is the center position. And, you know, there's a, it's hard to find that upper echelon top tier center uh, is Elias Lindholm potentially that center for the Capitals. We know that what we have, we've seen in Strom, we've seen in McMichael, LaPierre, Dowd, uh, those type of players that, you know, oftentimes they can fill in and, and, and play a good job at center. But do they have a Nick Backstrom-esque center in-house or do they need to go outside the organization? And I'm, I'm not going to say that the player I'm talking about here next is an Apple's for Apple's comparison for a Nick Backstrom, but Elias Lindholm is quite a dynamic player. I think that he could potentially make this team markedly better. On July 1st, Elias Lindholm will turn 29 years old and currently holds the position of center. Uh, he has a 4.85 million cap hit for the 23-24 season following the re-signing of Matthews, Aho and Shifley last summer. Lindholm emerged as the most reliable center approaching free agency so I, that's i think ultimately what the capitals are looking for in a nutshell uh is a guy like lindholm uh although lindholm and the flames made a genuine efforts to negotiate a contract extension it became evident that he would be traded when he demand his demands exceeded the team's budget consequently craig conroy successfully secured a favorable deal by trading lindholm to the canucks in exchange for a first-round pick. A conditional fourth-rounder winger, Andre Kuzmenko, and two defensive prospects. However, Lindholm's performance in Vancouver was initially underwhelming as he only managed to score 12 points and had a minus-six rating in his 26 regular game season with the team. Moreover, with the long-term signing of Elias Peterson, it appeared that Lindholm was viewed as a temporary addition to the team. Hey, why don't you call DC home? Uh, he is one of the most sought-after centers or will be on July 1st. Let's get it done. Let's bring him to Washington. At the trade deadline, there were speculations about Lindholm being involved in a potential three-way deal with Boston, with Kensel going to the Canucks. Despite a decline in his stock value, Lindholm's outstanding postseason performance has significantly bolstered his market value. Again, I like a, a lot of things about his game, and I think that the Capitals have a gaping spot at the center position when Backstrom left and then Kuzi got dealt. While the Canucks are benefiting from Lindholm's significant contributions in May, accommodating his salary increase will pose a challenge. Again, I understand that there will need to be players moved out to bring him in. The situation has prompted discussions around the team's strategies for managing player contracts and salary cap consideration. So, Taking a look at him, none of these players are going to be easy to obtain. You're talking upper echelon players. You take a look at him in the 2013 uh, drafted fifth overall, first round, fifth pick. Uh, and you take a look at what he did in the 23-24 playoffs. 13 games played, five goals, five assists, 10 points, a plus four rating. Um, you know, he's not probably the best player, uh, the best option, but he's darn near one of the best options the Capitals could possibly have at the center position. At age 29, he's six foot one, 202 pounds. I like a lot of things about his game. I think that, you know, if uh, Brian McClellan could find a way to finagle a deal to get him to come here, sign me up. He seems like a legitimate option uh, to come here and help hold it down. Uh, at the center position. One of the things that, that you know, Alex Ovechkin spoke of was he lacked chemistry with the centers that he played with. Um, and maybe that was because of the skill set. You know, I'm going to go ahead and say that Strom is a really good center, but is he at, as good as Backstrom was? Uh, was there the, the chemistry with uh, Ovechkin the same as the, there was with Backstrom and Kuznetsov? I think we need to see, step, you know, steps of improvement by going out and acquiring a big name center. So that is a tall order. And I understand that Mac's not going to be able to go out and sign Sam Reinhardt, Brandon Montour, and Elias Lindholm. But if he could do one of those, um, or one of the upper echelon type free agents, that would be a show of faith 
I think the Capitals fans that he is serious about improving this team because what we've seen so far from Mac has been lackluster moves. Um, you know, you take a look at what happened last summer when he signed Max Patch Ready and Joel Edmondson. Wow, how did how did that pay off for the Capitals? I want to go out and do something that is stunning, that is going to take Capitals fans by surprise. And to kind of the, the, the memo and, and the notepad and everything that I've seen written out about the Capitals is don't expect anything crazy. Well, I hope he gets, you know, a crazy hair and he decides to do something and make this team better in the fall. Again, I don't want to talk about the team is going to be better next year, the year after that, the year after that. Let's make this team markedly better. And they're going to be able to do that by adding the likes of a player like a Sam Reinhart, a Brandon Montour, or Elias Lindholm. Capitals fans, again, let's not be afraid to dream. Listen, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, your only daily year-round podcast covering the Washington Capitals. And I want to thank all of you that listen on the audio side and watch this on YouTube. You are ultimately what makes this show successful. When you're done here, head on over to Locked On's 24-7 streaming channel available on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app and on YouTube. All right, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk again next time.